Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to talk to you. They, there's nothing really more to show you about the build. But I realized I didn't tell you guys a story of when we bought this. Let me move around so you can actually get a little bit better light. There we go. A little bit more light on my face. Okay, so I didn't tell you the story of when we bought this. <clears throat> when we went and looked at it the first time, we looked at it, we crawled up in it, it looked like what we wanted to. We made a deal with the guy that we were going to buy it, and all was well and good. And we knew when we were looking at it that the guy we bought it from didn't drive it. He didn't do anything with it other than start it now and again. It was actually his brother's. His brother and his friend had bought it, we're assuming, from a government auction site to turn it into a tailgating rig for the football games, baseball games, stuff like that. Um, so their intention, as we understand, was to buy it and convert it into a tailgating rig. Great. That's why they put the paint job on it that they did. But for whatever reason, didn't happen. Don't know why. Doesn't matter. So we bought it. It started up. It ran. We're like, great. Runs. Let's take it home. So we drove it home. Or at least we drove it most of the way home. It ran and drive just fine. And we bought it probably 60 miles away. And we started driving home. And had the wife following me in her car. And it runs and drives. Not a problem. We stopped at one point to get gas in her car. This thing was plenty of gas. It has a 58-gallon tank. When we bought it, it uh, was half a tank of gas. So... 30, 34 gallons. I mean, plenty of gas. Um, so we start back on the road, start coming up the road, and none of my other vehicles are diesel. I have older cars. I've got a 46, I've got a 61, I've got a 65, I've got a 78, but they're all gasoline cars. And I'm familiar with diesel. I grew up on a farm with diesel trucks, diesel tractors, you know, it's not anything new, but I don't own a diesel until I bought this one. So I didn't know all of the specifics with diesel. And coming up the road, I started losing power. And I was like, well, that's kind of odd. And I'm going highway speed and trying to go highway speed. And it's just getting slower and slower. And you know, it's still revving, you know, it sounded like it was revving like it should, but not quite. And then it really started dropping power, and I got a fuel filter light on. I'm like, well, that's not good. But in my other cars, you know, I've replaced the fuel filters in them, and it's not really a big deal. It doesn't really keep them from running much. But this one just completely stopped. I mean, it went from losing power to no power in a very short order. And I got it over the side of the road. Wife pulled over behind me. And fuel filter light came on, was blinking, and it would not fire. It would turn over and over and over, but it would not fire at all. So, turn it off, let it sit for a few minutes, turn it back on, and, you know, all the lights gauges, everything comes back up, and I'm like, oh, cool, you know, turn it over, turns over and over and over, doesn't fire at all. So, I get on the phone with my buddy Mark, and talk to Mark. He's a diesel guy. He's uh, got a big uh, diesel bus Wonder Lodge type things, really cool, interesting. I should be, get him on his channel one time and have him bring his bus along and talk about it. So, you know, I talked to Mark about diesels, diesel engines, diesel fuel, and you know, he told me that the fuel filter is clogged. And on the diesel, when the fuel filter gets clogged, it pretty much wants to shut everything down because the diesels are very picky, particular about having clean fuel. And you know, of course, my question is, well, what can I do to get it home? Because I'm stuck on the side of the freeway, and the answer was tow it. And I don't like towing vehicles. It's just a sign of giving up. But there was nothing we could do, so I called the tow truck company, have them come out. And uh, they were really kind of confused. I told them I have an ambulance that I needed towed, and I wanted a flatbed truck to do it. And in this area, when you say an ambulance, the ambulances are very large, you know, large truck chassis, you know, kind of like a semi-truck, but with a big box on the back of it. They're not 
F-150, 250 uh, pickup truck style anymore, which is what this one is. It's a F-450 Econoline. They've moved to the much larger, you know, rescue type ambulances. Um, so the guy's like, what do you mean it's an ambulance? I'm like, it's an older ambulance. So it's pretty much a big box fan, so it should be fine. Well, in looking at the stickers that are on the outside, the curb weight on this thing in one area that's, you know, predominantly when you look at it, this is 9,600 pounds. Which is, it's heavy for a truck, but I'm like, 9,600, I mean, for what it is, that's not that bad. So the guy comes out, eventually, and gets over the side of the road, starts putting it up on to his flatbed. And as he's loading the ambulance up onto the flatbed, the front tires of his truck are starting to come off the ground. I'm like, um, is this thing going to actually fit up there? Is it too heavy or what? And we get it up there. And, you know, I ride with him to the house. The wife uh, follows us initially, but then she just takes off and heads to, to the house because, you know, we're going slow. And I asked the guy, he's like, well, if it's, you know, 9,600 pounds, then how come, you know, the front tires are coming off the ground and, you know, it seemed like it was a lot more weight. And he said that his tow truck was rated for 11,000 pounds, that his airbags were maxed out and that the ambulance was heavier than I said it was. I'm like, well, that's what the sticker said. So <clears throat> we were talking about, you know, ambulances and trucks and whatnot. And he says, it definitely weighs more than I think it does. And he dropped it off right here in the driveway. Um, did a great job with it. And talked to a couple other guys about how hard it would be to get the diesel uh, filter out of here. We ended up taking the diesel uh, fuel filter out. It wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. You look at the front of it, it's a van front end. So you think the engine's right there in the middle between the driver and passenger. And you have a little tiny hood up front. So everything's going to be hard to get to. And it's not easy, but it's not nearly as hard as you think it is. Uh, me and the uh, me and Rich, yeah, uh, you've seen him time down. He does some of the camera work. We took it apart. It took, you know, 20 minutes or so to reach in there. And it, it's more of the reaching to get into it that's difficult than anything else. You can get all the tools in there. Um, it's a little over, you know, hand tight. So you pull it out and kind of a mess and you pull the filter out. Got the filter out, it was nasty. Oh my God, was it just disgusting looking. But we took the filter out, cleaned out the bowl really well and got a new filter in there. Luckily, they're pretty easy to get a hold of. They, most of the shops here have them in stock. Uh, it's expensive for a fill filter, it's like 50 bucks. but Hey, that's what it is. Put it in there, primed up the system a couple times, and after about the third time of turning it on, leaving it on for five or ten minutes, turn it off, turn on five or ten minutes, turn it off. Apparently that's what it needs to do to prime it up. Um, eventually started right up, and it's started pretty much every time since then without issue. Um, it starts up and runs. I probably run it probably 20 minutes a week just to keep things moving. We haven't left the driveway with it other than once to move the cars around. I'm really looking forward to getting it on the road. But <clears throat> going back to the weight of it, once I got it here and started going through more of the paperwork and more of the stickers on it, the sticker that's on the outside cabinet that goes fully through how much it weighs and how much was done to it and what the gross vehicle weighting that's on the tires and all that kind of stuff, at the very bottom of it, the ambulance company that made it in New Jersey, their final weight on it is 10,460 pounds. That's what they measured the curb weight when they were done with it and shipped it out. So, yeah, it's a lot heavier than I initially thought. But now we have a number. Once we're done with the build, one of the things that I want to do is take it over to the um, truck stop, run it across the scales, I think it's going to come still pretty close to that number because we took some weight out of it and we put a little bit more weight back into it. But you can see it's still mostly a big empty box. The diamond plate and the cabinets on the outside is probably what adds most of the weight to this thing besides the box itself. So it's getting close. We're going to hopefully in the next week or so we'll have it on the road. I'll try to uh, switch over to the GoPro and take a video or two of it going down the road. Try to get a couple people to take some uh, drive-by shots while I'm driving it. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys a story of uh, bringing it home. I uh, thought 
I would be able to just drive it home without issue. And, you know, driving it, you know, it drives pretty well. But when you're driving something to bring it home for the first time, you're not really paying attention to every button, every switch, because you don't want to start messing with stuff and intentionally leave yourself on the side of the road. So I know it runs and drives, but do the windshield wipers work? I don't know. Probably. But it's an easy fix. But when you're trying to get it home, that's not really what you're looking at. You know, does the radio work? Yeah. But how well? I don't know. Don't care. But, you know, it's all those little things. The fan works. We uh, replaced that the other day. I don't know if I mentioned that in any of the other videos. Um, the fan, when you turn it on for the AC and heater, you turn it on, it would just screech. The bearings were shot in the motor. And it had one speed. So we uh, took it out and went to the junkyard, found another old van and pulled the motor out of it and stuck it in there. It could last 10 years, it could last a week, who knows? So it's hit or miss when you take stuff out of the junkyard. But it doesn't screech when you turn it on now, and we have all three speeds. So that's a bonus. Um, let's see. I think that's all I wanted to talk about on that, but yeah, it was, yeah, we drove it, and we drove it most of the way home, and then it died on us, so we had to have it towed home. So we're looking forward to getting it out on the road and you know working all the demons out of it. All right. Enough for this video.